Hi there, everyone. Glad you could join me to go over the week two assignment. So I'm hoping this week you're kind of getting your pace together. You're feeling like a little bit comfortable with the uh, assignments, the uh, discussions, the assessments, all of these things that are coming at you. But I thought I'd take a few minutes and go over the details, the logistics. How do I actually break down what needs to be done for the week two assignment? So let's take a look. I'm sharing my screen here so you can see some of the things that I thought were important in this assignment. So just a reminder, we are halfway through the course. I mean, can you believe it? In like two weeks, you're going to have this course completely finished. So we're going to take a look at the week two assignment because there's two parts to it. And I want to make sure that you are aware of doing both pieces. So let's take a look at part one. So part one, we've talked about this before, about how graphs can be misleading for some reasons. And we've given a couple of examples of how they can be misleading. Now, for the purpose of part one of our assignment, you're going to be looking at graph A and graph B. After looking at graph A and B, you'll want to explain the answer to these two questions. So number one, which line graph would you use to convince potential investors to invest in your company? Now, this is important for you to choose either A or B and support it. So you're going to be saying, I choose graph, whichever one, A or B, because, and then give us two or three reasons why you would choose graph A or B to convince potential investors to invest in your company. And then you're going to answer question two is, why would the other graph be misleading? So number one, you're going to choose specifically a graph, either A or B, to use to persuade potential investors to invest in your company. So make a decision, A or B. Once you decide, then you're going to give us two or three reasons why that graph is the best graph to do that. And then you're going to answer question two, which says, okay, now look at the other graph and tell us why it might be misleading. So 250 words on this one. You'll want to make sure, like I said, make a decision on question one. And then question two, talk about the other graph that you didn't choose. Hope that helps with part one. Let's take a look then at part two. Now for part two, you're creating a bar graph. You are given some data here and you're going to be creating a bar graph. Now, for this purpose, I thought I'd walk through how I would do it using Google Sheets because I, you might have Excel, you might not, but I'm a big Google fan. So what I did, and I'm sharing you my Google Sheets or my Google spreadsheet, I just put the data in our um, spreadsheet, okay? Then I'm going to highlight the data, and I'm going to choose to insert a chart. Now, when you do this, you're going to have the option to choose the type of graph that you want. So this one automatically chose a line graph, but we said we wanted a bar graph. So I'm just going to come over here to the chart editor and choose a bar graph. Now, you can change a lot of things on this graph if you want to. You can change the color. You can be as creative as you want. Um, but I thought that was pretty simple, right? Just to let Excel do the majority of the work for that bar graph, okay? Let's take a look at the details and make sure we've covered everything. We're creating a bar graph, maybe as creative as you wish with color. You can do it horizontal or vertical, dimensions, and the order in which you list the states. So you've got a lot of flexibility with how you put this bar graph together. Mine is very, very basic. Um, and but it covers all of the pieces and parts for this part two of this assignment. So I would encourage you, if you want to get creative, go with it for the different colors. You can change the, or you can change it to a sideways bar graph, whatever works for you, or you can keep it simple like I did. So I hope that helps you with part two of our assignment. Remember, a general instructions that we have for this assignment, make sure that you complete it in Word. So for instance, on my graph, 
my bar graph here, I would just take this and copy it into a Word document. Okay, I created it in, ex in Excel, but I'm uh, going to just copy and paste it in a Word document. That's very important. Put a title on the graph. You can include, you need to include axis or labels for the X and Y axis. Um, you, it tells you you can use any program of your choice. We did Excel or we did Google Sheets and paste it into a Word document. And you've got your ways to name the file. So I hope that helps. If you still have other questions and you need some more help for this week's assignment, I would love to meet with you. Um, I've had several people, we just hop in the Zoom room and in 15, 20 minutes, voila, they've got their assignment done. So if you need that kind of help, please reach out to me. You've got my... Um, my message me through canvas or you can email me or you've got my number there call or text either one works for me i just want to help you have a great week this week and uh i look forward to uh, talking to you soon bye now